Hey guys, this episode we're going to be talking about how to use jQuery and jQuery UI with ES Build in your Rails app. Now, jQuery was written at a time before ES modules and all of that stuff, so jQuery works by adding a window variable to your browser so that all of the plugins and things can be loaded and appended to that object to add features like tooltips and modals and whatever else, light boxes. And the setup for this is not as straightforward in ES Build as you might think. Um, there's ways to set that up with Webpacker that's very well documented, but I wanted to show you how to use jQuery and jQuery UI with ES Build. So let's get started by creating a new Rails app, and I have, let me show you here, Rails version 7, um, which allows me to specify ES Build as I create the app. So we'll say ES Build for CSS, we'll also say um, Bootstrap, and Bootstrap version 4 and earlier used jQuery, um, Bootstrap version 5 does not, so this is mostly just for styling, but you could use ES Build to provide jQuery for your Bootstrap JavaScript if you wanted, um, if you were still on an older version. You can also set up ES Build using JS Bundling Rails directly. You can check out the episode for that. It'll work with Rails 6 and higher, but you can even go back and manually install this on Rails 5, 2, or before. So we're gonna install this and then set up jQuery and then I'll show you um, kinda how you would expect to set up jQuery and then what you really need to do to set up jQuery for it to work with plugins like jQuery UI. So first things first, we'll go into our directory jQuery UI example and then we will yarn add jQuery um, and then we are good to go. So we can go into the code and we can drop into app JavaScript application JS, and we can simply import jQuery. But by doing this by itself, we're going to be a little bit surprised that nothing actually happened. Um, and that is because these imports are actually inside of this file only, and it's got not going to actually be assigning this to the window variable or anything. So what we really need to do is we need to import jQuery from jQuery, so that we can assign window.jQuery to that variable and window.dollar sign to that same variable. So this is how you would set up jQuery to be accessible on the window. And you'll expect that this works. And if we do a jQuery DOM content loaded uh, callback here, we can say console.log hello world. And if we go and let's say Rails generate a controller called main, an action called index, we can go into our routes and set up uh, root route so we can actually see our jQuery in action. So now that that's set up, we'll run bin dev and we can open up localhost 3000 to see that everything is good and we see that hello world is defined here. So this seems to work, but it is not perfect. And the reason for that is that anytime we do other imports, this jQuery window variable will not be defined. And the reason for that is because JavaScript uses hoisting with imports. So if that doesn't make any sense to you, let me explain and I'll show you uh, our example with jQuery UI. So let's go in here and go into jQuery example and yarn add jQuery UI from node modules. And if we go here and we say import jQuery UI, you might expect that we could try to do the same sort of import name from package, but let's just do this and I'll show you what happens. So if we refresh our page, we get jQuery is not defined, which is strange because jQuery is definitely defined. We just saw that that was the case. But if we look here, we are inside of jQuery UI widget.js in this comment. So this is where we've imported jQuery right here, and then we are importing jQuery UI. Well, the issue is that JavaScript imports like this are hoisted. So hoisting means that anywhere you could write your import, like you could write this at the very bottom of the file, this is actually going to be moved up to the top and imported before the code actually runs. So imports are a special command that JavaScript interprets and says, oh, cool, we're going to go move that to the top, import it for you, load all that code before we run any of the code in this file. So what really happens is that we import jQuery and then we import jQuery UI 
before there's a chance for these window variables to be set. So that is JavaScript uh, import hoisting that is happening for you. So it doesn't matter where you put this in, it's not gonna work because it's not running this code, even though in your file it seems like it should. So that's a quirk that you have to learn. And we can go and fix that by adding our own jQuery.js file locally. So what this file will do is simply all of these. We're gonna import jQuery and then assign it to the window variables. And that's going to guarantee that when we import source jQuery, it will run before jQuery UI does. So these imports will be moved to the top and then they will still be executed and run in order. So Turbo Rails, the controllers, Bootstrap, the source jQuery file, and then jQuery UI will all run in that same order. And then this will give us a chance to assign the window variables before jQuery UI uh, needs it. And so now if we refresh our page and we save these files and then refresh our page, we'll see that our hello world is now working again simply by moving those file or those lines to another file. Seems kind of strange as a solution when you see it on Stack Overflow, but that is why it works with hoisting. So this is good, but let's go try out jQuery UI. Let's grab something like a dialog and see how that works. So with a source here, we have dialog.dialog that we call. So we can paste that in. Um, and then we'll need some HTML. So let's go to that main index.html and we can paste in the dialog here. And if we wanna hide it, we'll say class uh, D none from bootstrap so that it is not visible by default. Now, what happened here? The dialog did not display. And there's some warnings and then an error. And basically this warning is the same as that error that dollar sign dialog is not a function. So when we call jQuery here, the jQuery UI code has not actually been able to successfully append the dialog stuff to jQuery. It loaded the widget JS stuff, but it did not actually load the dialog or any of the other plugins. And that is because when we look at the node modules here and we go to jQuery UI, the package JSON for this is set up where it's just going to lo load this main and it's just the widget JS. It doesn't load the dialog, doesn't load anything else. And it's kind of a problem for us because we really need all of those files to be loaded. And jQuery UI expects these to be dynamically loadable, but that's not the way that ES modules work. So what we really want to do is actually get rid of jQuery UI and download a custom package here to make that work. And this is the easiest way to set it up and it will work really well for you as well because you can minimize what components you want. So if you don't want them all, you can uncheck that and you can say, hey, we just want the dialogue, for example. And a dialogue depends on a button and checkbox and other things like that. So this is a nice way for you to go through and figure out exactly what you need and download that. So I have a copy of this where we've got jQueryUI.js and the CSS file. So let's copy these and let's open our directory here. And before we do that, let's yarn remove jQuery UI so we don't forget it. We won't be using the node module for jQuery UI. So we can go into app JavaScript and we can go into source. We'll paste this in here and we'll move the CSS file over to app asset style sheets. I'll paste that in here and we're good to go now. So what we can do is when we refresh this, instead of doing uh, the node module version, we'll grab source jQuery UI. And this is going to have packaged in the widget JS, the position, data, everything, the dialogues, the buttons, everything that we need in this file so that it will import all of it instead of trying to dynamically load those chunks as needed. So that's gonna fix our issue with our application JS and loading jQuery UI. And we can go into our assets, style sheets, and we want to import that jQueryUI.css. So we can say import jQuery UI, and that should be good to go. So now if we refresh our page, 
we will get our dialog box here and it is working and displaying our basic dialog. Now our display none kind of conflicts with that. So let's go back and edit this and remove that class display none um, because that's not really the jQuery way of doing things so that we can see all of our text here. And we can go through and um, because I actually grabbed one with all of the plugins, we can go through and grab the examples from other things. So for example, tooltips, we can have this and drop it in. And we'll be able to see that our tooltips, um, when we hover over those, those should work as well. And uh, we basically just need to initialize the JavaScript in order to make that work. So we can go through here and we can say, um, we're looking for any tooltips and that's running on the document. That will automatically take care of that for us so that when we hover over that, our tooltips work and they are usable. So that's good. Um, and we can go through and you know play with as many of these other ones as we would like. Maybe the tabs would be interesting. We can view the source for that. We can grab the div for tabs and we just need to set up the tabs as well with the JavaScript. So this is dollar sign tabs dot tabs and everything should be good for those as long as we save the file. So there's our tabs. Our dialog is uh, popped up on top as you would expect. We can close that and everything is good to go there. So that's how you use jQuery with jQuery UI. You can add other plugins in this way because you're going to be importing those. Um, you might need to drop them into your JavaScript folder. You could create a vendor folder or something like that. I just threw them in source, um, but that is where you're gonna kind of need to set up your JavaScript plugins that aren't compatible with ES modules. If they are, you can import them like normal and not worry much about it, but a lot of the jQuery approach uh, requires the old style of doing things where it's expecting global variables like that. So this is a great solution for that and you can continue using this in your Rails apps in Rails 7 and beyond.